products have been integral to that mission. From the beginning of Android, we believed that an open OS would enable a whole ecosystem and bring smartphones to everyone. And as we all add more devices to our lives, like tablets, TVs, cars, and more, this openness creates the freedom to choose the devices that work best for you. With more than three billion Android devices, we've now seen the benefits of using AI to improve experiences at scale. For example, this past year, Android used AI models to protect users from more than 100 billion suspected spam messages and calls. We can all agree that's pretty useful. There are so many opportunities where AI can just make things better. Today, we'll talk about two big ways Android is bringing that benefit of computing to everyone. First, continuing to connect you to the most complete ecosystem of devices, where everything works better together. And second, using AI to make the things you love about Android even better, starting with customization and expression. Let's begin by talking about Android's ecosystem of devices, starting with two of the most important, tablets and watches. Over the last two years, we've redesigned the experience on large screens, including tablets and foldables. We introduced a new system for multitasking that makes it so much easier to take advantage of all that extra screen real estate and seamlessly move between apps. We've made huge investments to optimize more than 50 Google apps, including Gmail, Photos, and Meet. And we're working closely with partners such as Minecraft, Spotify, and Disney Plus to build beautiful experiences that feel intuitive on larger screens. People are falling in love with Android tablets, and there are more great devices to pick from than ever. Stay tuned for our hardware announcements, where you just might see some of the awesome new features we're building for tablets in action. It's really exciting to see the... <laughs> it's really exciting to see the momentum in smart watches as well. Wear OS is now the fastest growing watch platform, just two years after launching Wear OS 3 with Samsung. A top ask from fans has been for more native messaging apps on the watch. I'm excited to share that WhatsApp is bringing their first ever watch app to Wear this summer. I'm really enjoying using WhatsApp on my wrist. I can start a new conversation, reply to messages by voice, and even take calls. I can't wait for you to try it. Our partnership on Wear OS with Samsung has been amazing, and I'm excited about our new Android collaboration on Immersive XR. We'll share more later this year. Now, we all know that to get the best experience, all these devices need to work seamlessly together. It's got to be simple. That's why we built FastPair, which lets you easily connect more than 300 headphones and why we have Nearby Share to easily move files between your phone, tablet, or Windows and Chrome OS computer, and Cast to make streaming video and audio to your devices ultra simple, with support from over 3,000 apps. It's great to have all your devices connected, but if you're anything like me, it can be hard to keep track of all this stuff. Just ask my family. I misplaced my earbuds at least three times a day, which is why we're launching a major update to our Find My Device experience to support a wide range of devices in your life, including headphones, tablets, and more. It's powered by a network of billions of Android devices around the world. So if you leave your earbuds at the gym, other nearby Android devices can help you locate them. And for other important things in your life, like your bicycle or suitcase, Tile, Chipolo, and others 
we'll have tracker tags that work with the Find My Device network as well. Now, we took some time to really get this right, because protecting your privacy and safety is vital. From the start, we designed the network in a privacy-preserving way, where location information is encrypted. No one else can tell where your devices are located, not even Google. This is also why we're introducing unknown tracker alerts. Your phone will tell you if an unrecognized tracking tag is moving with you, and help you locate it. It's important these warnings work on your Android phone, but on other types of phones as well. That's why last week we published a new industry standard with Apple, outlining how unknown tracker alerts will work across all smartphones. Both the new Find My Device experience and unknown tracker alerts are coming later this summer. Now, now we've talked a lot about connecting devices, but Android's also about connecting people. After all, phones were created for us to communicate with our friends and family. When you're texting in a group chat, you shouldn't have to worry about whether everyone is using the same type of phone. Sending high, <laughs> Sending high quality images and video, getting typing notifications, and end-to-end -end encryption should all just work. That's why we've worked with our partners on upgrading old SMS and MMS technology to a modern standard called RCS that, that makes all of this possible. And there are now over 800 million people with RCS. on our way to over a billion by the end of the year. We hope every mobile operating system <laughs> gets the message and adopts RCS. So we can all hang out in the group chat together, no matter what device we're using. Whether it's connecting with your loved ones or connecting all of your devices, Android's complete ecosystem makes it easy. Another thing people love about Android is the ability to customize their devices and express themselves. Here's Dave to tell you how we're taking this to the next level with generative AI. All right, thanks, Samira, and hello, everyone. So here's the thing. People want to express themselves in the products they use every day, from the clothes they wear, to the car they drive, to their surroundings at home. We believe the same should be true for your technology. Your phone should feel like it was made just for you. And that's why customization has always been at the core of the Android experience. This year, we're combining Android's guided customization with Google's advances in generative AI, so your phone can feel even more personal. So let me show you what this looks like. To start, messages and conversations can be so much more expressive, fun, and playful with Magic Compose. It's a new feature coming to Google Messages, powered by generative AI, that helps you add that extra spark of personality to your conversation. So just type your message like you normally would, and then choose how you want to sound. Magic Compose will do the rest, so your messages give off more positivity, more rhymes, more professionalism. <laughs> or, or if you want, in the style of a certain playwright. To try or not to try this, quest, this feature, that is the question. Now, we also have new personalizations coming to the OS layer. At Google I.O. two years ago, we introduced Material U, it's a design system that combines user inspiration with dynamic color science for a fully personalized experience. 
We're continuing to expand on this in Android 14 with all new customization options coming to your lock screen. So now I can add my own personalized style to the lock screen clock so it looks just the way I want. And what's more, with the new customizable lock screen shortcuts, I can instantly jump into my most frequent activities. Of course, what really makes your lock screen and home screen yours is the wallpaper. And it's the first thing that many of us set when we get a new phone. Now, emojis are such a fun and simple way of expressing yourself, so we thought, wouldn't it be cool to bring them to your wallpaper? So with emoji wallpapers, you choose your favorite combination of emoji, pick the perfect pattern, and then find just the right color to bring them all together. So let's take a look. And I'm not going to use the laptops. I'm going to use a phone. All right. Uh, so let's see. I'm going to go into the wallpaper picker. And I'm going to tap on the new option for emojis. And I'm feeling in a kind of, I don't know, zany mood with all you people looking at me. So I'm going to pick uh, this guy and this guy. And uh, let's see, who else is in here? This one looks pretty cool, like the 8-bit one. And then obviously that one. Uh, and uh, somebody said there was a duck on stage earlier. So let's go find a duck. Uh, hello, duck. Where's the duck? Can anyone see a duck? Where's the duck gone? There's a duck. All right, there he is. I got some ducks. OK, cool. And then uh, pattern-wise, uh, we've got a bunch of different patterns you can pick. Um, I'm going to pick mosaic. That's my favorite. I'm going to play with the zoom. Let's see if we'll get this just right. OK, I got enough ducks in there. OK, cool. And then colors, uh, let's see. Uh, ooh, that pops. Uh, <laughs> let's go with a more muted one. Uh, or maybe that one. That one looks good. That looks good. I like that one. All right, select that, set the wallpaper, and then I go home. Looks pretty cool, huh? And uh, the, little, the little emojis, they react when you tap them, which I find. <laughs> I, fi I find this unusually satisfying. And uh, how much time have I got? OK, no, OK, let's move on. Uh, OK, so <laughs> of course, many of us like to use a favorite photo for our wallpaper. And so with the new cinematic wallpaper feature, you can create a stunning 3D image from any regular photo and then use it as your wallpaper. So let's take a look. So this time, I'm going to go into my photos. And I really like this photo of my daughter. So let me select that. And you'll notice there's a sparkle icon at the top. So if I tap that, I get a new option for cinematic wallpaper. So let me uh, activate that and then wait for it. Boom. OK. Now, under the hood, we're using an on-device convolutional neural network to estimate depth, and then a generative adversarial network for in-painting as the background moves. The result is a beautiful cinematic 3D photo. So then let me set the, photo, set the wallpaper, and then I'm going to return home. And check out the parallax effect as I tilt the device. It literally jumps off the screen. So both cinematic wallpapers and emoji wallpapers are coming first to Pixel devices next month. So let's say you don't have the perfect wallpaper photo handy, or you just want to have fun and create something new. With our new generative AI wallpapers, you choose what inspires you, and then we create a beautiful wallpaper to fit your vision. So let's take a look. So this time, I'm going to go and select Create a Wallpaper with AI. And I like classic art, so let me tap that. Now, you'll notice at the bottom, we use structured prompts to make it easier to create. So for example, I can pick, uh, what am I going to do? City by the Bay in a uh, post-impressionist style. Cool. And I type, tap Create Wallpaper. Nice. Now, behind the scenes, we're using Google's text-to-image diffusion models to generate completely new and original wallpapers. And I can swipe through and see all the different options that it's created. And some of these look really cool, right? Uh, so let me, let me pick this one. I like this one. So I'll select that, set the wallpaper, and then return home. And cool. So now, out of the billions of Android phones in the world, no other phone will be quite like mine. And thanks to Material U, you can see that the system's color palette is automatically adapted to match the wallpaper I created. Generative AI wallpapers will be coming this fall.
So from a thriving ecosystem of devices to AI-powered expression, there is so much going on right now in Android. Okay, Rick is up next to show you how this Android innovation is coming to 